And what is your name? My name is Lucas Elliott. And where were you born? I was born in Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas. And where did you live before you decided to go to Texas Southern? Uh, before I came in Texas Southern, I lived in Granbury, Texas, which is about 45 minutes southwest of uh, Fort Worth. Um, little town. Uh, I mean, we had a big high school, but there weren't a whole lot of people other than that. Did you live in a divi- diverse community, or was it strictly strictly white? Um, it was slightly diverse. Uh, we had a pretty large Hispanic community, still do. Um, and but the majority of the kids I went to high school with were either Hispanic or uh, white. I think we had in my four years in high school. I think we had two black kids, maybe. Okay. Um, so it was slightly diverse, but you know, not a whole lot. Not like you. Right. And what age are you right now? I'm 18 right now. 18. Do you know where your family lived before you were born? Like your mom and your dad? Do you know where they're from? Yeah, my dad is from Breckenridge, Texas, which is a small town about an hour outside of Abilene. Um, Definitely more of a white community. Um, uh, African American communities on one side of the tracks and the white communities on the other side. Um, my mom is actually from right here in Houston, um, off of uh, Telephone Road, um, and obviously Houston's a pretty diverse community, and she grew up, you know, with that culture, and you know, is still very open to cultures like that today. So. Did your dad ever talk up to you about the diversity, of, not the diversity, the segregation of the place that he lived, about the whites being on this side of the tracks and the blacks being on this side of the tracks? Oh yeah. Um, my grandfather was actually the uh, like the head attorney for Stevens County, um, Attorney General, I guess it would be. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, there were all sorts of cases where it was prosecuted, you know, blacks against whites and things like that. Um, my dad used to tell me stories about how his dad would take him, you know, across town when he had to visit with black people. And, you know, there was very clearly a line. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, white people accepted the fact that they lived in with black people in the community, but it was definitely, you know, set, set kind of, set kind of divide between, so. Right. Okay. What, what made you choose Texas Southern? Um, to be honest, I'm here on a golf scholarship, so that's really what made me choose it. Um, previously, I had been planning to attend a school that was, uh, very near the Houston area, mm-hmm. so I do kind of like this part of Texas, and I like Houston, you know, the city is awesome, there's a lot to do, uh. I like the culture, um, you know, I kind of wanted to branch out and get, a, not actually get away from my roots, but just kind of experience something new, a little bit of adventure, mm-hmm. um, but, you know, I really liked Texas Southern when I came to visit and really thought that there'd be a future here, and, you know, I knew it'd be an adventure considering, you know, where I am from, so. Right, that's for I'm sure, most, most definitely. If, if not for golf, would you have considered Texas Southern, or had, had you heard of Texas Southern? before you got an offer to play golf? I had actually heard of Texas Southern before. Um, like I said, my mom being from Houston, we would come down here to visit a lot. And so I knew Houston pretty well, and we'd been around U of H a lot. I'd looked at going there. Um, and it's kind of hard to go by U of H without going by TSU. Right. Um, so, you know, I knew about TSU. Um, would I have chosen to go here? Um, not necessarily. Uh, they didn't exactly have the degree that I wanted. Um, now, of course, once I found out that I could get, that I had been offered a scholarship here and had the opportunity to play golf, well, there were other degrees I could pursue to get, you know, my job career, the goal. Um, right. So, you know, and yeah. academics. Right. Okay. Um, is it odd to you that less than 30% of the golf team at this university is actually black? Um, I do think it's a little bit odd. Um, but at the same time, considering the fact that, um, and I say this, you know, with no bias or anything like that, but golf is kind of a predominantly white sport. A lot more white I kids agree. grow up playing golf than black kids. And it's not necessarily because white people don't let black people play golf. It's just lots of times white kids are more afforded the opportunity. And, you know, it's kind of like you see a lot more African-American participation in basketball than you do white kids. And yeah. it's, like, I mean, it's not that any of them are better at basketball. It's just that, you know. It's predominantly it, 
it's predominantly participated in by that race. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting that golf is predominantly wide in the HBCU to me as well. One thing though is that you know whenever I see um, an African American player, you know, golf golfer that is good, you know, I really do respect him because he probably really did have to work not only to just get to where he was good, but to be able to follow that avenue because golf's not cheap either. Right. So you really got to be able to put the time and, and the money in. And, you know, like I said, lots of people don't have that opportunity. So. For sure. For sure. Is it safe to say that you have experienced something similar to the experience of a minority's daily life experiences? I would say so. Um, one of the uh, black kids I went to high school with, his name was Elijah. And uh, he and I were actually pretty good friends. And, you know, one day I kind of asked him, I was like, you know, what's it like? being black in Granbury, you know, going to a school mm -hmm. that, you know, you're this, the only black is, kid This here. is the high school where you, there was only like two or three black yeah. kids? Yeah. Around? Okay. And, and so, you know, he told me, you know, you walk into a room and everybody looks at you and, you know, they don't necessarily stand, but, you know, they acknowledge your presence. They kind of look at you and, you know, you stand out and people kind of expect more out of you athletically. That's mm -hmm. something he told me. Um, so coming here, you know, I don't necessarily think they expect more of me athletically. But I do get the uh, get the sense, you know, he's talking about where de people definitely notice you and they notice that you're different. Um, do you think they expect more out of you academically? I think so. Um, being so, white or uh, being being from a place where you have not been involved with blacks in a school sense. I think people do kind of expect more academically. I know a lot of my peers do. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> they're texting me asking for answers, but, for sure. yeah. but I mean, I think as far as expectations go, I think people, a lot of people kind of expect me to be ignorant about it, about, right. you know, being, not only being white at HBC, but ignorant to, you know, what goes on outside of the white community. I mean, uncultured. Right. Uncultured. That, that's a great way to put it. I think, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I would, I would definitely agree. And my next question was, do you feel more cultured after your short time here? Uh, Even though it's so short. I really do, um, you know, coming up on the end of the first semester, but I really do feel like, you know, not only have I kind of seen the other side, um, but I feel that, uh, you know, I can kind of relate more. Um, mm -hmm. You know, before I came here, I listened to certain type of music, and I didn't really like the music that, you know, the people listened to when I got here. But, you know, I, I kind of embraced it and was like, well, you know, at least branch out a little bit. And now I can get down and stuff just like anybody else can. Yeah. And, you know, um, a lot of it is just learning, you know, how to not, I guess, not be ignorant. Not that I was before, but just to kind of more embrace it and be open to it. And I think that I really have, you know, I don't know if adapted is the right word. But right. my, my no, knowing how to respond to people exactly. assuming that you don't know anything. Right, right. Yeah. And, and. I've found that like people show respect to each other kind of a little bit differently, and mm -hmm. I can handle that. And I realized that people may be saying one thing and back home they meant something else, but here, you know, it's not doesn't necessarily right. Mean it's that, definitely so. an acclimation state of it. Yeah. Um, what part of history fascinates you? Have you ever learned about Black history, or have you learned about major points in history being white related? Um, I did. Learned a little bit about black history. Um, I had a paper my senior year over the Buffalo Soldiers okay. um, around the Civil War period, uh, the Indian Wars. Um, but I really love World War One, World War Two era type stuff. You know, I really like those eras in history, socially, but also, you know, I like to study study those war eras. And mm -hmm. um, I actually just turned in a term paper over the Tuskegee Airmen. Okay. Um, so I got to learn a little bit about that. So you're definitely educated in black universities. Oh and yeah, black. Yeah. I, I wouldn't say I'm an expert, but I certainly know a lot more right. than when I got here. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, did you vote? Let's get into more political stuff. I did vote. Um, okay. This is my first time to be able to vote for American president. I wasn't wasn't going to miss that. Right. Um, everybody's got an opinion. I wanted to to express mine, so I definitely took, definitely took advantage of that opportunity. Okay. The uh, a big a big standout in the election was many people thought that. The people who who didn't get out and vote would, would have changed the election, but it tur it's turning out that not all those people would have voted the, diff the opposite way that would have swayed the election. Right. So it's interesting to hear that you voted at such a young so, such a young age when not all eighteen year old people who are 
eligible to vote actually register and vote. Right. So that's good. Do you believe that there is a white America? Uh, I do believe that there is a white America, but I do not necessarily agree or embrace that myself. Um, right. Right. I definitely think that in the South, uh, white America is very much a kind of a culture. Yeah, the term is kind of scary, huh? Yeah, and and I like I said, I don't necessarily agree with it. Um, but being with the history of the South and how we had slaves and then how we had segregation, right? Um, I, and lots of people, their parents grew up like that, their grandparents grew up like that, and so yeah. they were raised the same way. And being educated on the history of it makes it harder to stray from that there really is a belief that in society there is a white America, just like there was back then when blacks were trying to gain the right to vote and whatnot. Exactly. It's kind of at a state of similarities in how people feel about their nation and insecurity. Have you personally ever had a racist experience? Um, Have you ever been a part of a you being racist or you being a receiving end of racism? I pride myself that um, you know I consider everyone to be equal. Um, yes, I was raised in a white community, um, and my values probably are a lot different than some people's values um, in the African American community. But I do pride myself that you know I consider everybody equal. You know, if if you're coming to me and, and you know if if we have the same opportunities in life and you're a different color, well, that's not that doesn't matter to me now. You know, since I've come to Texas Southern, I haven't had anybody, you know, really come after me for being white. Now, granted, the day after the election, there were a few comments tossed my way, probably because I was white, mm -hmm. but I don't necessarily hold that against anybody. I mean, right. lots of people were unhappy that Trump won, and, you know, they're going to voice their opinion, and that's that's fine. Right. I don't hold that against anyone. Do you think who the president-elect is determines people's personal views and or opinions on other groups of different race? No, or, I don't. or do you think that's that's in stone who they are as a person? I I don't think it reflects on how they feel about about other races. I think that um, you know we had eight years of President Obama, and lots of people believed that Hillary Clinton was going to be very similar to that. Um, and I think that all the people that got out and voted for Trump and the people who voted in this election, you know, America was ready for change. We were ready for a different way to go about things. I don't necessarily think that. People who voted for Trump, every single one of them hates black people. Um, you know, I have relatives that um, that I speak with on a weekly basis who have been staunch Democrats that voted for Trump because just because they want to see a change in the country. Um, mm -hmm. And I know that those people are definitely not racist and, you know, would do anything in their power to give an African-American person the same opportunity that a white person may have if, if they could do that. So I don't think that... How you vote determines how you view other races. Now, granted, there are probably some people like that, but as far as everybody, no, I don't think so. Well, you know, I agree with a lot of what we talked about, and I, I appreciate all your input, and good luck with your experience at Texas Southern. Thanks, man. You too. Thank you.